Congregation may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. So if you're watching online, I want you to put your answer. If you, if you heard my question earlier, if you're watching during the announcements, you can put it in the comments section. For those of you who are here, does anybody have a guess why last week's attendance and this week's attendance is obviously lower than last week's, but how this week plays really well into the gospel story? Who knows? This is like the children's sermon all over again, yes. Show me, yeah? Was there anybody missing in the gospel story? Thomas. And so there are people missing today. But as we go through the message today, my hope is that we see our opportunity as those who are here of how we can reach out to them and what we can assure them of and what we can invite them to. So my mom and I, and I wanted her to pay attention to this sermon, which is why I'm gonna include her in it. Uh, my mom and I got into a disagreement about church. Now I'm gonna tell you so that all of you can collectively yell at me after the service just like they did last night. I did not tell my mom I was using a story about her in this sermon. So, if you want to tell me how I shouldn't do that, feel free to. Uh, and you can, if anything, form a shield around me for her to not be able to hit me after the service. It'll be nice. So my mom and I got into a disagreement about church, about attending church. But this disagreement happened like 20 years ago. It happened while I was in seminary. And so I was in seminary down in Columbus, but on the weekends, uh, at least once or twice a month, we would come back up to where my parents were living in Brunswick at that time. And we would come, Melissa and I would come home on the weekends. And so we had just gone to church. And after church, we would sit. And I remember being in the kitchen of the house where they used to live. And I think we were eating something. And we got into a discussion, I believe, about... Uh, Pastor Scott's sermon and my mom made some kind of nice comment about it and that kind of sparked the discussion, the disagreement. And it ties directly into John's gospel, John chapter 20, which I kind of already went over in the children's sermon and then we talked about it a little bit before I started and I'm hopefully going to tie it all together for everyone. So we got into this disagreement and we went back and forth with each other for probably 20 minutes or so, but I want you to not be worried because both of us are very polite people. So it wasn't like an angry arguments or anything. So based on what she said about the pastor's sermon, we got into a discussion and what I realized is this, my mom went to church because she got something out of it. Crazy thought, right? She went to church because she got something out of it, whether it was the, the pastor's sermon, or she liked the music, or she got to see her friends, or you know something else. She went to church because she got something out of it. A phrase that we commonly hear, that pastors commonly hear, you probably say it amongst yourselves, is, you know, I was fed at, I was spiritually fed at the service. And so I realized to my astonishment that my mom was a consumer. She was a church consumer. And I'm not saying that she doesn't give financially or offer her, her talents or her time. But as far as the worship service goes... She was a consumer. She went because she got something out of it. And she probably still is a consumer. She just shook her head, yes, fantastic. We will argue after the service, fantastic. The only difference now is that in addition to all of those things that I, that I mentioned earlier of why she might go now, she comes because she gets to see me. So that's an added benefit. And the reason this became a discussion between us, a disagreement, 
was because I was in seminary at the time and we were taught something specific in seminary. We were taught that we are not called to be church consumers. We don't go to church for ourselves. We, we don't go to church because we get something out of it. We go to church to worship God. It's not about us. It's about God. And so, yes, we may like or be related to the pastor. We may like the music. We may have friends in church or some other reason that is a benefit to us, but that's not why we attend church. In fact, we might not get anything out of it, but that is okay because I was taught we are there to give to God, not to get from God. And we had a fairly lengthy discussion and I am proud to say that after this lengthy discussion and we both shared our viewpoints, that neither one of us was persuaded from our current stance. And I think part of the, the selling point to me when I was in seminary, one of the professors, and this, if you didn't know this, 95% of professors in ELCA seminaries, 95% of them were pastors before they went on and got their doctorate in whatever field that they teach in. And so they have experience in congregations. And, and one professor in particular shared this story. He said, you know, when I was little, when I was growing up, I didn't like going to church. And obviously it worked out okay. He became a pastor. He became a doctor of biblical studies and he's brilliant and a, and a great professor. But he said, when I was younger, I didn't like going to church and, and my siblings didn't like going to church either. And he said, I remember complaining to my mom about having to go to church one Sunday. And he said, we told her, look, we didn't pick this church. You picked the church. I don't like the pastor. I don't like the kind of music they sing. And you make us go to church. And he said, his mom looked at them and said, listen, there are 168 hours in a week. And we spend about 167 of them focused on us. The least you can do is give one hour a week back to God. And I like that viewpoint, but there's a there's a selfish reason I like that viewpoint as well. See, I don't like the idea that anyone comes to church because of my sermons or because of my personality or because Randy's amazing playing of the organ or because they get to see Paul at church, which is one of the benefits that I draw from coming to church. They get to see Paul and be friends with him when you worship here. And the reason that I don't want that to be the reason that you come to church, that anyone comes to church, is because any one of those things, or all of them, could be off on any given week. Not all of them. So Randy's always going to be amazing, because she's Randy. Paul is always going to be a little bright ray of sunshine in our lives. But as far as I'm concerned, my sermon and my personality might be off week to week or for weeks or for a month. And so I'd prefer that people come to church because of God, to serve God, to, to experience God, to hear from God, because regardless of how good or bad I am, God is eternally good. Now, over the course of my ministry, I've come to realize that my position, while it is theologically and church-wise and, and faith-wise, while it is technically logical and solid, I realize that my position is not realistic. And the reason 
that I know that my position about coming to church, whether it's for God or if part of it is for us because we like certain things, I realize that it's not realistic because I've come to meet more and more pastors every year since I've been ordained. And this is true of every pastor. What I've realized is I'm a lot like you. Because every year since I've been ordained, I've come to know more and more pastors. I've had the chance to worship in a variety of of settings within our ELCA congregations here in our synod and even throughout the United States. And here is what I've come to realize. What I've learned is that there are a lot of pastors out there who I would not want to be my pastor. I get it. It doesn't mean they're bad people. I just don't connect with them. On the other hand, there are quite a few pastors, a majority of them actually, who I would love to call my pastor if I weren't busy doing this pastor thing on the weekends myself. And so I understand that as much as I want to make the worship service about God, there's always going to be a part of me of my sinful self that makes church about me. And while I don't think this is the preferred method, I think that God knows this about me and if you're like me, about us. And that God is able and willing to work through that to reach us. Now let's go to the gospel story. Gospel story, John chapter 20. It is the reading for the second Sunday of Easter every year. So we have Easter, we have the resurrection story, and then the reading in the lectionary every year for the week following Easter is this reading about Thomas. It's really about Jesus, but we call it the story of doubting Thomas. So Thomas doesn't believe. He shows up. But he shows up late. So all of the disciples have been gathered together. They're worshiping. They're they're congregating. They're fellowship together. And as they are together, Jesus comes and he's in their midst. And he offers them his peace. And he gives them the Holy Spirit by breathing the Spirit onto them, by giving them that life. And so they have this miraculous, amazing experience And then Jesus goes. And sometime after Jesus goes, Thomas shows up. And the disciples, the other ones, are really excited. They're like, Thomas, you're not going to believe what happened. And boy, were they right. They say, you're not going to believe what happened. Jesus showed up. And we all know that Thomas says, yeah, I don't believe you. Does anyone know why Thomas doesn't believe him? Owen, you know? You didn't see it yet? Your way to keep that going from this children's sermon. I like that. Anybody else? Why doesn't Thomas believe that Jesus was there? He was what? He was dead. Right? Jesus was dead. And he knew Jesus was dead. And dead people, as I went over last week, dead people, in my experience, typically stay dead so Thomas tells him I don't believe it unless I put my finger into the hole in his hands unless I put my hand into his side I'm not going to believe it I'm sorry it's just not going to happen and a beautiful thing about the story is that God does not condemn Thomas for what he has said instead the very next week Jesus appears to the disciples as they are gathered together. And I, it doesn't say this in the Bible, but I would love it. And if somebody's doing a remake of the Bible, please contact me. I would love to direct the scene. I would love it if it was one of those things where they were gathered together and Thomas is there and the other disciples. And they're excited because they think they're going to see Jesus again. And Thomas is saying, like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And then it was one of those things where it's like all of a sudden 
he's like, he's behind me, isn't he? And then he turns around, Jesus is just standing there. I think that would be amazing. But Thomas, in that first week, does not experience the risen Christ. And so he comes back the next week, not expecting to meet Jesus again, not to see the risen Lord and Savior, but just to see his friends, to worship and to mourn the death of the Messiah. But that's the part I want us to remember. That's the part, the part I want to point out because I often miss this. I'm going to ask you some really easy questions, two of them. We've already gone over the answers. Just be consistent, okay? Did Thomas see Jesus that first week? No. Was Thomas expecting to see Jesus the second week? And he still came back. He still came back. And I think that is just amazing. He didn't see the resurrected Christ. He wasn't expecting anything different the second week, and he still came back. And it's an, a great thing that he came back. Because in coming back, in gathering with the other, the other followers of Jesus and being together with them in worship, Thomas gets to meet the risen Savior. And it made me think of that this week because of this. Here's the truth. I do not care why you come to church. I don't mean that in a mean way. But your motivation is not a priority for me as to why you are here. All I care about is that you're here. And for those of you who can't be here, I understand if you can't be here and you're able to be with us online, that is great. But I'm, I'm going to say this, and this might be controversial. Uh, I hope it's not, and I apologize beforehand. If you can't be here, I get it, and I love the fact that we can live stream and we can reach people that, that otherwise we couldn't reach. And I have family members who live in different states who are able to watch or who are nursing facilities are unable to watch. And that is an amazing amazing gift that we have but I'm going to be honest with you if you're able to be here there's no experience like actually being here so I don't care why you're here all I care about is that you are here and that we keep coming back each and every week because even if we fail to be fed by my sermon, even if for some unknown reason we don't like the music selection, or if uh, because he's got a conflict in his schedule, Paul is not here that week, we come because of God. And we trust and believe in God's promise that God is eternally good. And we believe that when we gather together, God is always in our midst. Amen.